Hello friends, do you know Francis Hugen? Yes, the famous ex-Facebook employee turned whistleblower. Well, she has been in news recently and you know why? 3rd October 2021, Francis actually shocked the entire world with her explosive revelations on Facebook's hateful content promotion strategies. Well, what happens next? Facebook's share fell by 5%. It's worst outage since 2008. And wait, it's not over yet. The European Union and the British Parliament have invited her to testify so that they can introduce new regulatory measures for tech giants like Facebook. That sounds like, you know, a bad time for Facebook, right? Now guys, this is the power of whistleblowing. And in today's video, we learn all about whistleblowing, how it works, guidelines, you know, pros and cons, and much, much more. Hi all, my name is Dheeraj Vaidya from wallstreetmojo.com, the home for most authentic place to learn finance and accounting. Let's get started. Okay guys, let's begin by finding out what actually is a whistleblowing policy. A whistleblowing policy is a set of rules or guidelines given to stakeholders like the employees, vendors or contractors of an organization that basically gives them an authority to raise their voice against any unethical practices like uh, frauds, scams, corruptions, etc. happening within the organization. The key idea behind these policies is to actually make the stakeholders aware of all the activities you know, that are considered illegal or unethical and uh, you know, basically it empowers them to raise their voice against you know, such activities. Also you know, who are the whistleblowers? Whistleblowers are those incredibly daring individuals who basically report these illegal activities that are happening within an organization. Now, a key aspect of whistleblowing policy is its anonymity clause, which basically guarantees the whistleblower that no matter what, their identity will be kept secret or anonymous, unless actually they want to come ahead and disclose themselves. Now, what this does is that it ensures a whistleblower that they will remain protected, right? Against any kind of dangers, you know, think of uh, losing their jobs or, uh, you know, losing faith of their colleagues or maybe facing legal actions, you know, in case, you know, they want to go ahead and blow the whistle. Okay, so speaking of illegal activities, let's look at some of the activities that are generally considered illegal in a whistleblowing policy guidelines. So typical malpractices actually include any kind of harassments or discrimination. It could be use of, let's say, company's assets for personal gains, uh, another example could be illegal sales or uh, let's say a uh, conflict of interest. It could be also corruption or maybe, you know, sharing of confidential information and uh, so on and so forth. Now, having said that, a key thing to note here is that you don't need to be specially qualified or you don't have to actually go through any sort of a training course to follow a whistleblowing policy. A whistleblowing policy can actually be put into action by anybody. It's like you know someone who is in a public sector organization at a local level state level or a federal level or let's say anybody who is a regular employee or works in a private sector or let's say for profit not for profit or things like that so basically what it means is that a whistleblower can be anybody it could be suppliers contractors or any individuals who know anything about illegal activities going out in the organization. So you see, you know, there are no special qualifications required. Just keep your ears and eyes open. So before moving on, let me tell you that whistleblowing is not something that takes place, you know, entirely within or outside the organization. Yes, there are basically two types of whistleblowing. The first one is the internal whistleblowing where the whistleblower actually exposes certain malpractices by let's say managers or junior employees or senior officials you know to the internal organizational heads like the HR or the CEO and the second one is the external whistleblowing 
where the whistleblower actually exposes an organization's illegal activities by reporting it directly to the media or maybe police or, or the government as well. Now, you must be thinking, you know, why do actually companies have a whistleblowing policy in the first place? So, you know, the central idea behind this policy is to actually make the employees, you know, feel that they actually belong to the organization, you know, by creating a sense of uh, uh, a kind of cultural integrity and at the same time, you know, uh, encouraging employees to feel confident in raising their voice against any misconduct or malpractices. So, you see, you know, it's all about creating a sense of, you know, responsibility here. Now, speaking of responsibilities, it is actually the responsibility of an organization to educate its employees on a clear whistleblowing policy guidelines, the likes of which should include uh, the types of issues uh, that can be reported by individuals, uh, think of accounting frauds or corrupt payments, sexual harassments, etc. The guidelines should also explain how to raise a concern. And it should also include uh, a clear option to report, let's say, without disclosing the identity. And uh, finally, guidelines should also include, you know, how it protects whistleblowers from retaliations and so on. So enough of policies. Now let's look at some of the easy steps included in whistleblowing policy to, you know, uh, blow the whistle within an organization. So the first step when it comes to whistleblowing is gathering documented or recorded evidence and basically presenting it to a corporate ombudsman. Ombudsman is the official basically who investigates the complaints. So these evidence could be in the form of emails or it could be internal studies, it could be video recordings, billing records, etc. Next is that the corporate ombudsman actually forms an audit committee of people who are generally experts in handling legal compliances. Now, this committee uh, usually starts their inquiry within two days after receiving the complaint and comes up with a proper response within 15 to 45 days. So during this time, the whistleblower or uh, any other witness is generally questioned by the committee. And uh, let's say in any case of uh, wrongdoings, if they are found, the audit committee actually takes appropriate actions to either penalize or punish the concern. Now, as robust as a whistleblowing process may sound, there is no doubt that whistleblowing is not always a smooth process. Specific barriers like resistance from senior management and employees, uh, fear of retaliations, lack of identity protection measures in the guidelines, etc., you know, inhibit uh, a smooth implementation of the policies. Now, despite of all of these barriers, there is no doubt that whistleblowing policies have many advantages. Let's look at some of them. Firstly, a whistleblowing policy actually helps in controlling all sorts of malpractices such as corruption, misbehavior, etc. and keeps employees honest in their work. Secondly, you know, it creates a sense of responsibility and belonging among the employees by letting them know that they are among the guardians of the company. And finally, there is no doubt that companies who basically incorporate these uh, whistleblowing policies stand a chance to increase their image in the market. However, as with anything in life, whistleblowing too has its own shortcomings. Let's look at some of them. The first one is that you know whistleblowers can end up on the wrong side of their teammates or employers, you know, which can ultimately lead to their victimization and harassments. Other problem is that whistleblowers often find it difficult to continue in the same organization against which you know they have raised their voice. Now, this could either be voluntary decision or uh, it could be a forced one as well. Other other problem could be that uh, you know oftentimes there's a lengthy legal process and too much of media attention can cause lots of stress to the whistleblowers and uh, it can lead to their being uh, kind of blacklisted from their profession. So yes, as you can see, it's not that hunky-dory. So finally, if I were to have my say on the impact of whistleblowing or being a whistleblower, I would do so by pointing you out a classic case. Now, beat this. You remember the famous impeachment of the then president of the United States, Donald Trump? 
What if I tell you that the catalyst behind this impeachment that actually occurred on 18th December 2019 was a whistleblower who is believed to be a member of the intelligence community. Now that's some serious impact guys. I hope you found this video to be useful. Please do like and share. And if you have any feedback or want to suggest a topic for any future video, then you may do so by writing about it in the comments section. Also, we come up with interesting videos on finance and accounting topics regularly. So if you have not subscribed to our channel yet, then please do so by clicking on the subscribe button below so that you can get the notifications as soon as we release the new video. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.